I was away for a month and a half. Oh, good deal. How are you going? Am I fine? Uh, yeah. Disney. Yeah, it's all good. Hilton Head Island. Oh, that's <laughs> a great report to make. Myrtle Beach. Oh, because you're going to do the principal report oh, to make, too. Oh, you're going to do the principal report to make, too. Right. Guess who's going to be the principal report to make, too. Right. Guess who's going to be the principal report to make, too. Right. Guess who's going to be the principal report to make, too. Right. Guess who's going to be the principal report to make, too. Right. Guess who's going to be the principal report to make, too. Right. Guess who's going to be the principal report to make, too. Right. Guess who's going to be the principal report to make, too. Right. Guess who's going to be the principal report to make, too. Right. Guess who's going to be the principal report to make, too. Right. Guess who's going to be the principal report to make, too. Right. Guess who's going to be the principal report to make, too. Right. Guess who's going to be the principal report to make, too. Right. Guess who's going to be the principal report to make, too. Right. Guess who's going to be the principal report to make, too. Right. Guess who's going to be the Oh, this isn't going to be good, then. I want the right notes. Sarah, 5.30, say we'll have a So mm -hmm. she called the meeting. She's not going to love you. 5.32, that's okay. <laughs> to be continued. <laughs> to be continued, yes. And I think the first order of business is the minutes, is it not? Do you have the minutes on November 13th? I think there were some. So and we have a corrected set. It didn't do was a corrected set. A, yep. different agenda, a different set came with the agenda. Right. Which included Mr. Lesko's name. And right. He was, in fact, not in attendance. So yep. that revision was made. And then. Um, and then the only thing is, Darius wasn't at that meeting when we met. <coughs> Yeah, so I make a motion to approve the minutes with the correction. As corrected. As corrected for Tuesday, November 13th, 2018. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. No Darius. Item number two, financial statement. Sign once. You know, we have the profit and loss statement that's here, and we had all gotten a copy of an updated copy of the results here today. Any other comments or? You are in super shape for this time of year. Um, like, uh, you know, um, some healthy balances. Um, you know, pretty much in all of your lines. Um, so I don't see anything that jumps off for of this report that uh, is of any real concern. You get 62.85% of your budget remaining and you're halfway through the year. So kudos for uh, keeping a tight rein on things. Yes. So I had a couple of questions on, um, so salaries for the business manager looks like um, it maybe just moved down, right? Pulled it out of business manager, dropped it down to a because we break. It's not right. a. It's not a yep. We being an outside agency instead of an inside personnel. Yep. And then um, I was curious. The same kind of thing. Um, the salaries for the technology director and the tech, uh, other tech staff, kind of went away. And I, I think they. Sh I wasn't sure if they showed up somewhere else. Um, well, they didn't go away. So right. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm hoping they, they kind of popped in somewhere else. I was trying to find them. Oh, they did. They popped in under um, network and telecom, it looks like. Uh, right. And then there was... Um, there was... Uh, I think the copiers moved around a little bit too, and then mm -hmm. there was one other thing that I was trying to find. That was the copiers. Um, oh, food service director. Let's take. I guess money was added to the director's salary um, and taken out of bad debt and loss. I guess. And then. Um, I think that was it, though. I thought there was one that I couldn't find. So to take a st half step back, yep. that was kind of Mary walking like, this is Judy Hull, who's a new member of PMS. I was going to ask. Her. Okay. Apologies. Okay. Not a right. <laughs> um, new member of PMS, and so she came on, she was brought on board, kind of onboarding the last two 
last two weeks yeah. or so. Mm -hmm. um, and so I guess what I'm asking you, Trevor, is are these questions? Do you want do you to find out why those no, are moving? No, I was just I was the answering his own. Yeah, I'm answering okay. my own as I went through because I didn't get enough time to, to go through it in full okay. detail. But it looks like whatever was taken out was just moved mm -hmm. line to line. Yeah. Um, and the copy if we're split So up. that they're coded in the proper place. Correct. Yep. The year reporting. So I'm good. Thank you. And I should have said welcome. Yes. <laughs> I wasn't in the November meeting, so That's I wasn't right. sure if you were here then or oh. not. Oh. And I looked at the minutes and I said, oh, he wasn't. So I could, yep. should have asked. Well, thank you. And welcome to Deerfield. Thank you. Anything else? We're good there? Yes. yes. We're good? Yeah. Oh, and there's warrants to sign. Mm -hmm. And you're working on those? Yep. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of public comment tonight, so nope. we can uh, we'll do a good job. <laughs> they haven't learned the new 530 time. Right, I'm sure Hey, Okay, motion to adjourn? No. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Good. 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 So. <clears throat> We've gotten through the minutes and the warrant yep. and uh, financial statements, and we're moving on to public comment, which there is none. So we're ready for unfinished business, the capital projects update. All right, I have Bob Lesko here, the director of our school facilities, to kind of walk us through. Um, I think he has a handout in front of you folks there. And what I tried to do was put a menu of stuff together that this group can look at and come back and give me a little more direction about where you are. Because some of the numbers come out pretty big. Uh, Trevor mm -hmm. and I met with uh, Tina. <laughs> Tina, <laughs> a while back. And uh, it's a trick question. Yep. It is. We came up with a group of projects and, and we looked at it a bunch of different ways. Yep. And I've since had different contractors in oh, and, good. and looked at it. And I've got some, you know, I haven't bid the thing out to a bunch of people. Right. But I'm relatively confident that all the numbers I have in here are pretty good. So the, the first project is the entry courtyard out here, and it's just a disaster of cracks with grass growing up mm -hmm. through it. Um, every year I get a lot of comments first thing in the fall, and there's really not a lot we can do. Right. And it, it's going to start deteriorating more every year with that grass growing in it right so basically what the price is there I, I was wondering with the with the pavement that was there whether we could uh, grind it and resurface it but they said it would be a much better project and, and the pricing isn't bad yeah on the uh, paving the one thing that we talked about was maybe we could add a little interest to that pavement by using a street print or something. Right. And I was absolutely floored by the difference in pricing. Oh, really? Um, the price to, to pull up that asphalt and re regrade everything and put two coats of asphalt down is less than $3 a square foot making it street print as eleven dollars a square wow. foot. Okay, yeah. I was not just, so so I don't think we no. we want to ask for that. I, right. I think what we want to ask for is to to redo that to redo the courtyard and the two sections of sidewalk going out in either direction. Yeah. And to pull that cluster of god awful bushes on the front of the on the kindergarten and preschool yeah. wing, or little preschool Get that wing. that out of there. And and it's a big enough yeah. project that, you know, once we're getting that out of there, we can make some decisions about whether we want to replant something or leave it without something. The problem with plantings anywhere is they look nice when you first put them in, yeah. and 10 years later, they're right. out of the control. Right. So yeah. they're not we compared. might want to consider doing that without plantings, but yeah. I think we've got enough in there to do it either way. Okay. So I think I'm hearing some agreement that not doing the street print is right. probably the best way to it. And I can, I'm not quite sure how we're going to put this together and present it. Um, yeah, I can I'll talk about that. Give you guys a, a Word document that you can work on or yep. any way you want to do it. 
a project that I kind of slipped in there, and again, it, could I just ask a question on the front and entry? I yeah. said, if I could just ask a question on yeah. the front sure. entry, does it need to be as large as it is? I guess is the question I would ask. Um, if we made it smaller, what would what are you suggesting? Do we have a grassy area, or I, you might have a grassy area? Yes, I would assume it would be grass, uh, but I would think that it would. A, it would save on the amount of square footage you're replacing and might bring the price down a little bit. And B, I, I mean, it's just so, to me, and I've been here since the day it was designed and was part of the team, uh, it's just a really stark entrance. I mean, yeah. It's just this massive That's Kind of I was looking at the street print. Um, I don't have a, you know, I, Tina might be a better judge of the size and, and that sort of thing. The one issue I have is that's a heavily trafficked area, yeah. and if you oh, put grass it. in there, it's yeah. going to be hard to maintain, and it's going to get beat up. Real, it's not going to, it, it's not going to naturally be a nice looking mm -hmm. grassy area. Right. Um, possibly some bollard kind of planters or that kind of right. thing. Right. But and I don't, you a know, couple by of the, benches. And, <laughs> At three dollars, at three dollars a square foot for paving, if we leave it grass, that's going to cost us something to put in too. So, mm -hmm. um, I would leave right. it. You know, we, we can look at it, but but I see. I hear what he's what you're thinking. It's also an opportunity if we're going to redo that to yeah. you know, you do some sort up. of planter, some sort of sculpture, some sort of something right. that. We got anybody in the uh, the parent body that uh, is a <coughs> landscape designer? <laughs> Ask around for thoughts. We have a landscape. You know, it's a, to me, it's an opportunity to potentially do something with the front of the building. I mean, it's a it's a good looking building as it stands, but as you said, the pavement is cracked. It's you know, you got kind of why we talked about trying to break it up with a street print. We, yeah, yeah. yeah. Waiting pool right up front. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 A couple of things. A splash pad. Perfect for kids. There's a few things. Kid it too. A water feature. A few things that you know you use it for is the lining up. Yeah. And that's why we thought of the street printing or some yeah. sort of way to kind of line up those grades in the morning and they spread out quite a bit. Um, you know, when we do have fun fair and stuff, a lot of activity happens in that big area. Not that you couldn't do it in the grass right. as well, but that definitely is what happens. Sometimes um, in the winter, the kids go out there too if it's too icy out back. And I miss the yeah. uh, I miss the four trees in the front. I know those are probably, who would put a tree in the middle of a parking lot again, but um, I don't know. If they, looking at the postcard of when you first did the school, it was nice to have some sort of interest in the front instead of just a big sea of asphalt. Right. So, right. Uh, but I'm sure, I know the guys when they plow, they'd rather just, you know, do the whole thing, and so it, you know you have to weigh that kind of maintenance of it. But I think it would look nice, and it'd be a good time to look at some way to dress up the front. Absolutely, I agree. It's a big sea of black. Yeah. <laughs> it's just dark. And, yeah. 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 I mean, we, we were had, talking about different sidewalks or paths. To right. Even, so. Yeah, a different way to line the kids up. And, and you stuff. were talking about maintenance issues. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And upkeep and maintenance of who's going to do that. How is it cleared now? Snowblow or do you plow right up the? It's plowed. Do you plow the? Do you plow that or snowblow it? We did plow the town plow. Town plows. Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 plow the, yeah, the, 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 the town does yeah. a lot of the plow, and I'm I'm relatively sure that's what happened with the bollards right. that were there initially. They got whacked and yeah. finally taken down and moved we on. It's because we had snow that snow uh, highly we, paid principal that was plowing the front of the, the entrance to the school in the yeah. early days. <laughs> Doug right? used to plow. Doug, yes. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm sure that's yeah. part of the, part of it was the bollards, <laughs> and the bollards didn't have any lights, so we went to the pole lights. Yeah. Oh. Um, yeah. Bollards don't splash a lot of money <clears throat> across that amount of expanse, yeah. so we, we put in pole lights to, to give more, more okay. lighting. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. All right. Um, the the second project is in 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 the back here. They had a stony area and a sidewalk that just didn't work. So we took that out and repaved it. Came out pretty good. They have got the same thing, maybe even a little worse on the walkway coming out of the other side of the gym. Right. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. So what yeah. what this number is is to replace those paved areas and do something. Like with that 
area that should be grass. I don't know if we can get grass to grow there or what, but I'll bring right. some people in to look at it and try to come up with something that works there. Okay. Um, whether it's wood chips or grass, you know, what, right. whatever. But it, 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 there's not a blade of grass growing in there now. It, it's just a very stark and not That's where the looking. trees are, right? In yeah. between that, yeah. yeah. Yes. So, so I want to get the walkways fixed. I want to get that little bit of stone out of there, and I want to try to figure out what to do with the. Uh, do you remember when they did the roof? Did they did they gutter that back there again? I know that a lot of ton of water comes off of there when yeah, it, I have. To, I can't been remember a while since I looked, but yeah, I think it. I don't. I was out there, and I don't see any ruts in the ground from water okay. coming off the building. Okay. It's more just a matter of there's trees there and it's right. severely compacted and it doesn't get a lot of light. It back doesn't there. get some. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, then the next the next project is to redo the gym floor. It's, it's we're gonna be asking for that in a bunch of the schools. Right. Every year the custodians um, pretty much try to sand and recoat the floors. Um, this year we struggled with that. We've got a new group of custodians here in this school mm -hmm. and it didn't come out as good as it normally does. Yeah. It's time to sand the floor, redo it, and repaint the lines. And I would suggest that some thought ought to be given to either annually or semi-annually having somebody come in and do that. Right. Because it's, it, it's, it, it's not an easy job for somebody that doesn't do it professionally right. all the time. I've taken it. sure got quite one guy in the high school that knows how to do it pretty well, and I try to spread him around. And But yeah. you know, this year, it really just didn't work out here. And there's a couple of spots in the floor that just don't look good at all. Okay. Um, and that's compounded the fact that it's time to. Yeah. So it, for, for sure, I would strongly recommend the fifteen thousand dollars to mm -hmm. to sand it and redo the lines and such. Um, the other part is just something I wanted to get a discussion out there. Mm -hmm. um, then the the toilet upgrades. I want to talk a little bit. There's, from my perspective, there's four major sets of toilets in the building, and they're pretty close. You know, they're not identical but they're close enough so right. that they would all cost about the same to do and I can't I don't imagine doing one in, you know do, doing less than a set at a time you want to do yep. boys and girls at the same time right so that's how I broken them out there's, there's three sets down in the wings and there's one set here as you come in the building yes and I priced it up per set and then the second pricing I have is for the smaller units, and there's three and a half of those. There's, there's, there's two sets of men's and women, three sets of, there's three sets of men's and women, and one set of just, I think it's a unisex, it's yeah. a minister's office or something mm -hmm. like that. And so that one I priced per unit. But on the toilets, the, <coughs> broke that up into a whole bunch of different uh, prices so that we could uh, talk about which we want to do. The partitions and flooring are the, probably the two neediest items right. in those bathrooms. And, and so I've, that, that's priced out at $8,500 per set. So that's a, a men's and like if we man, if we decided to do the main one down here, that eighty five hundred dollars would take care of the partitions for the men's and the women's. Okay. Um, just the partitions and, and the epoxy flooring? Pardon me? And the epoxy flooring. The so, epoxy flooring. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And then the next increment is <clears throat> to redo the lighting and the ceiling tiles. Yeah. and some miscellaneous stuff, some right. radiator covers and a few other little items in there. Yeah. And then the next one is if we decide to replace all the fixtures. The fixtures are functional. Um, yeah. They're mildly stained. Um, that one to me is, that's kind of a coin toss whether you throw that one in or not. Mm -hmm. And then the next one is the tile walls. 
I was again surprised at the pricing that I got. I brought a couple of people in to look at the tile walls, and it's about nine. I I got prices all the way from I got prices from nine to twenty five dollars a square foot for the tile. Um, I made the assumption we could probably get it done on the lower end. Yeah. But even even that that it's a lot of money. It's uh, it's by far the highest priced item in those bathrooms. Yeah. And <laughs> they don't look bad. I mean, they're dated. I, I guess the thing I could say about the tile is it looks a little dated. Right. And any um, uh, any way to do some other material versus tile on the wall, like uh, panels or something like that. But they're probably going to be about the same. But there are there are other materials. The pricing would still be expensive. Right. And and there's footage. just mm -hmm. nothing that's as easy to maintain as tile. Right. And, 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 and that's a big right. You're right. It's lasted what almost thirty years. So, so, you know, we can put together a project on those, adding up whatever you know, mm -hmm. whatever amounts that you you people support, and and also decide how many to ask for in a, in a year. Mm -hmm. And then. The smaller ones on those, I'm looking at upgrading the flooring, lighting, ceiling tiles. Fixed, they're small and they're easy to do. So those would be about fifteen to hundred dollars a piece. That's or, like kindergarten. And, yeah. yeah. Okay. And I feel like those are important because those are. Yep. And then I, I put a number in yeah. for the yearly flooring we do every mm -hmm. year. We're always trying to get three or four rooms. Right. Um, get what, as much carpeting out as we can and redo them with tile. Mm -hmm. And they've been averaging four to five thousand dollars a piece per room. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I forget. I know we have some money in there for this year. Yeah, we have right? three that we yep. plan on doing. Okay. Yep. Great. And then we'll just cycle that again <coughs> during February break. Is that one we're planning on doing the next three? Yeah. If we get lucky, we might do some of them during Christmas break. But okay. I think so it's probably going to be February. Break. All right. Been a real busy year this That's year. Next week. Pardon? Yeah, I know. Two weeks. Two weeks is not happening. Yeah, let's get that yeah. lined up. Okay. Anybody have a question on that stuff? Well, I just, I, I, more of a, I guess, a, yeah, I guess the question I would ask if you were, if we were to proceed with the bathrooms, would you do all of the components? In each set, I mean, this would be a hundred thousand eight hundred dollars or a hundred one thousand dollars approximately to do all four bathrooms all at once and do everything. Go ahead. It's a lot of money and it's it a is. lot of work. Mm -hmm. um, I would recommend doing a couple of them to start with, right. and I don't feel too strongly about the fixtures and the tile walls. I put numbers on those because when we looked at it, mm -hmm. we asked the question. Right. But, um, yeah. And you know, to some extent, you got to think about what the town's going to buy into. Mm -hmm. Well, the the piece that I would, the reason I asked that would be, I'm, I'm sort of looking at it and thinking, if you did the partitions and the epoxy flooring in all four bathrooms for about thirty-four thousand mm -hmm. dollars or thirty-five thousand dollars in one year, right. and then if the other pieces need it after that work is done. Because really the, the primary yeah. thing you're going to notice, at least in the, in the boys' and men's rooms, are the partitions, Absolutely. which were the old steel, yeah. part, painted steel partitions as opposed to the current laminates right. that hold up a lot better and don't rust. Yep. Um, so those really are in dire need of replacement. Yeah, I agree with that. And so the floor, as you're going to do you that, because they're nasty. Yeah. And, and that epoxy floor, if we can get rid of the speed bump and in I, the boys' room. We do that at all. We like that. That's so it. Oh, that's it. <laughs> and I mean, I've, I've got I can tell you the story of how that speed bump got there someday, if you want it. They're but. pretty rusty. Yeah. 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 I don't know. So, <laughs> what's that? I want to know now. Yeah. I'm curious. Yeah. So. So then we'll, you know, we we'll have to figure out how we can get this, these requests to the town. Um, yeah, we get them to the CIPC and the finance committee. We're always looking for yeah. December first, so when we're behind the eight ball, right. as usual, <coughs> we'll keep rolling it in. Well, we can take this on Monday, great, as a preliminary. Yep. Okay. Sure.
Uh, there's a meeting of the capital planning uh, next Monday. That yep. We can okay. Take this. If you could send this. Yep. And I or if, you want, can, if anybody wants to change this around or work with it, I'll be glad to send you the mm -hmm. word file. That's what I was saying. If you'd send me the word word file, I can. I, I probably wouldn't change this, right? Mm -hmm. But I'd send it off okay. yeah, to the, the group yeah. that's meeting Actually, on Monday. Sure. Yeah. I can forward forward it over. Sure. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> Great. Thanks for the hard work putting all that together. I know it's a lot of meeting people and you know getting numbers and filing it together, but it's important. So. Am I forwarding it just to the two of you or to the entire? Either one. Either one. Are you the ones that are bringing it to town? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Anything else, sir? No, I'm going to make a break for it if you guys are okay. with me. <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you for coming in tonight and presenting. Good to see you. New business, school lunch financial update. So you should have in front of you the uh, profit loss statement for the school lunches for Deerfield. Um, you can see Deerfield's in good shape. Great. Uh, Mary does a um, Mary does a great job, and um, it's part of your report. But the, you've gone to the online system. Um, Right? Is yes. that part of your principal's mm -hmm. report? It is, but it's fine. Go okay. ahead. Um, you know, we moved down to the online payment system for Deerfield, um, you know, for families, so that's going to help with collection of money. Yeah. And, you know, for the most part, she has everything running smoothly. And sales are up, even yeah. more so this year, as I'm told by her. And uh, yeah. you can see where we're at margins wise. Um, she hasn't had a lot of people out, um, so there's not a lot of sub pay and that kind of thing in there as well. So it's a very, we're the most healthy school lunch budget in the district. That's great to hear. You want to wear a special hat tonight. You can have that. <laughs> That's one of those things you don't wear a special hat when it's going well. You get you get to wear the special hat when it doesn't go as well. Okay. <laughs> all right. Um, but I got to say overall, because it's good to know that. Um, no, it is good. As we to went to the regional, um, Mary overseeing all five, um, the, the all but one schools in, is in very good are in very good shape. So. Great. Um, so she's doing a great job across yep. all schools and kind of reining that in um, from losses to um, to keeping things in the black. Good. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Is there a reason why salaries and wages are down so much in November? Hours. Yeah. Number of number of days of November with the holidays. So I'm wondering. You have to also remember not just the holidays, but also remember we had. The Perry Teeter Conference Day and a half day, so there's another okay. two days that weren't sold. So you're talking about no almost a week less of, All right. of employment. Yeah, I could think of the Thanksgiving day. holiday, but I couldn't get to the rest of them. Yeah, the Veterans Day, you had the election day where we weren't here, and then you had the half day prior to that. And then a snow day. day and we have and a snow, snow day. day. And a snow day. Good. What? Snow day. That's what yeah, right. you're saying? Yeah. Right. So yeah, that's why that, those numbers are. Sure. All right. Great. Thank you. There you go. Time. I'm going to go to see you. <laughs> All right. I'm going with you. Budget timeline. Budget timeline. So that should be part of your packet. Um, principals in, and I are meeting with TMS um, on Thursday to start the budget process. Um, and then we, you should have a calendar as part of your handout there in front of you. Uh, just to kind of... Uh, an outline of where we're going. I believe Donna was trying to get to town meetings and Deerfield was the only one she could not lock down to when the town meeting is this year. In uh, prior to sending us out, I don't know if she's got it since then. It'll be um yeah, oh, it is. I don't see need it. Uh, April should be April 29th, right? Last Monday of the month? Yes. Should be April 29th. Okay. Oh, I guess May is there from the day when it's when it's there for the third. If, if there's a carryover. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Um, 
The only thing um, we were talking about prior to this meeting, um, Tina and I were, and I can just project that January 2nd is a tough, it's a tough turnaround day to come back and have budget meetings. And so we're gonna have these preliminary meetings. TMS is gonna go back and work at it. We're gonna come out of vacation the day we come back, you have a school committee meeting. And so I don't know if um, the committee's open to moving that yeah. later in the month. Um, and I don't know how, if it's gonna be a, a nightmare to schedule that, but I just, I just know that we're gonna have not a lot to share. Even though I know January is really preliminary in it, um, but that's my only concern about that. The day we come back to school from the break, um, you guys have a, we have a school baby. Are we the only one? Yes. Yes. That night? Yeah. We're the only one that week. For that some week. reason, I'm responsible for it because I put it on the phone. <laughs> yes. But um, that was when it was, you know, so concentrated in getting the combined meetings that I wasn't paying attention to what was happening in the. Have you got your whole calendar with you? you let me pull it up. All right, I have it up. Don't pick a Tuesday. No, right, we've got the 8th and the 15th already. Did you want to try to do that 530 before Frontier? Because you move Waitley. Waitley's the 7th, is that? So Waitley moved theirs this morning. Um, they like their morning meetings and they're going to go keep going. And they're going to have their public um, hearing, it, they said at night, but right now they're going to keep mo moving forward with the morning meeting. Um, the question is, it's a little bit of time, but I can try to do the 8th and we can do the same format we've been doing. Um, mm -hmm. And I can ask Frontier to, to, at the next meeting after this one, to push them to 7, from 6 to 7, and do the, do the format we have been doing. I mean, it gives an extra, you know, four work days for, um, mm -hmm. for us to put things together. And then it's on a night you're out already anyways. Mm -hmm. Instead of like yeah, a, yeah, and, and that's not the, that's not my mode. That's not I'll be honest. That's not my motive on this one. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you what's my motive. But um, my motive is the day you come back and you have a school committee meeting. That, um, yeah, it's going to be. It just well, may not be the most productive in the sense of right. with the budget stuff. And I'd love to be able mm -hmm. to use you know yep. make that a productive meeting. So do you want want me to try to do that? You can ask. I have to ask the Frontier Committee to move theirs to seven, right. and then we'll shoot for five thirty. Okay. Ken's pausing. I, I'll reserve judgment on my part, but if, if three out of the uh, five are amenable to it, that's fine. I've, I've got a doctor's appointment in the morning in Boston. I have a feeling I'll be volunteered for babysitting the duty that day as well if I'm in Boston, but uh, uh -huh. I can try and be back by 5.30. That's, that's the only reason I'm hesitating. I'm supposed to be in Boston most of the day, so. But if it looks good for others, it's your, guys, it's your call, <coughs> by all means. Do you want to come up with a, another date in case Frontier doesn't move? Sure. Oh, can't move. June? Just kidding. June 5th. Works for me. <laughs> <laughs> If you don't want to budget, that's fine. <laughs> the 10th? The 10th? 10th. That's fine, too. 5.30? Still? What's that? 5.30 time. Uh, Do you guys like 5.30? You want to go to 6? Either way. 4? 3? 8 a.m.? <laughs> something going on with school finance that night in Gill, but... That's fine, we can shoot for the eighth. It's a backup day, so. Yeah. Sounds um, good, that's fine. January 10th is the backup at, time was? 5.30. All right. All right, thank you. Sure. sure. Thank you. Okay, so we're, we have the two dates. All right, and there. the 10th, possible right. dates. And any questions on the calendar? You see them over there. Yep. yep. Okay. Calendar looks 
like all just the years fine. past. With yes. With two needs to put in place, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Great. Okay. So back to the top. So, any other questions on the budget timeline? No. Reports? <clears throat> Do you have some, anything to report? Collaborative wise? Yes. I so, see this one. yeah. That, I actually didn't provide that. So, I don't know if somebody. You pretend like you did. Okay. Back, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, the collaborative. When I was there most recently, there's a lot of initiatives with curriculum and social justice. Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask this question, actually, if you don't mind. I don't have a sense of how often we use their services. Uh, is that something that you all would know? Um, and I only ask because I, I often, there's a little bit of disconnect of what I, um, I, I just don't have a sense of how involved, how integrated their services are with ours and whether I should be volunteering us or, or promoting our participation in their programs, whether we have students that are involved in some of the schools they have set up. We do a lot of professional development, right? Yeah. We teach us access to collaborative um, individually to do some professional development. We have um, Sapphire, from, she's from the collaborative, coming in to do some social justice work with us in last, last year. Um, but individually, I feel like teachers access it quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. We're seeing that. Yes. Right. Yeah. 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 And that, sorry, special yeah. Yeah. And that information comes your way just via the website. How do you, do you have emails? Emails. Emails, emails from Yeah. They bombard us. Yeah. Yep. They do. Yeah. They do. Yeah. It's just well, very good about that. Yeah. Yeah. So it gets at this question of how I might be most useful in being at the meetings. Uh, because I, I guess I just, I'm happy to be there and represent us. And I think that's, they, they expect that there's a certain representation Correct. in order to have a yes. meeting. Mm -hmm. yep. um, but um, if the information's getting there, if we're participating in their programs, um, I guess, is that sufficient? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I feel like most of our communication comes through email and then yeah. um, we share amongst ourselves too. Yeah. And I know that I've actually seen Lisa share a few emails on the way, so I think we kind of um, disperse it ourselves as well. Yeah. Okay. And then the question is, we do use their their services for um, student placement awareness, so, yeah. so that, that it comes and goes depending yeah. on the year, but, but they're, um, the, 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 what, what was it called now, they've changed the name of it. The Collaborative for Educational Services? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's the school. Heck Academy? Heck Academy, yeah. 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 Academy. So we do yeah. and still place it. there, it depends on the year. And last question, just for my knowledge, do we pay an annual mm -hmm. fee? Okay, it's yeah. not per service. The services are available to us because we're part Both. of the membership. Both. Yeah. Both. So you pay an annual yeah. fee, then you pay mm -hmm. a, a tuition, tuition versus non-tuition. Yeah. I mean, yeah. fee versus membership fee versus non-membership fee. Anywhere. So if you want to attend a teaching seminar, yeah. Yeah. you go to it. We pay. Yeah. You pay a. You know, yeah, discount rate. Discount right. rate. It's and it's they're reasonable rates for, yeah. for what they're, yeah. they're they're not like oh my god you, you yeah. paying that for that it's it's yeah. usually a fair yeah. fair rate for that yeah. so well I found the whole thing is is great and and Bill is professional you know it's a number of evaluations each year so mm -hmm. uh, it seems it's great and it's good to know how involved we are with it yeah. So. Okay. That was your report? That, my report was questions. I, I, yeah, there's nothing good. new to report, although I'm seeing this, and mm -hmm. this is just for our Did you guys talk about that? I, they sent that to me yesterday. I don't recall this. Um, okay. This might be for the next one. Well, then you're ahead. You can see you're right. 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 Um, I'll, I'll talk about that when I go through my thing. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to interrupt you, because I think you're going to go. You can go now, if you want. No, can you make it sideways? Really. No? Yes. Okay. So we have a I turn right. Yeah. Okay. So we have a lot going on here. There's a lot of meetings. We just came off of a bunch of grade level meetings, where the Union 38 grade levels get together and we meet with Louise Law, who's our direct uh, our director of elementary education. 
Um, in that, they were looking at our math interventionist, Mike Shoulder, provided a thoughtful presentation on math fluency and kind of um, looking at a different way of looking at math fluency. It's not just efficiency anymore. Um, it's looking more at being flexible, being able to pull apart numbers and put them back together and using strategies. Um, that kind of dovetails into, I was talking with Meg after that, thinking that parents kind of need to get involved with this and kind of understand what math fluency is now. So Meg's looking at putting a, a PowerPoint slide together to put on the online for families and also joining our Coffee Connection and our PTA um, and maybe doing a little thing for the PTA just to um, have yeah, families get it, um, a little bit more into like what we're doing for math fluency. Um, so some of our poly bath work, we met as a faculty and came up with some DES values. So um, we now have value statements and our next work we're going to be working on on Friday is um, really defining behaviors with a common language and coming up with a menu of consequences. So we're, we're moving right along with our poly bath work. Uh, we just came off of a successful book fair. It looks like we're um, going to give out $2,000 in dollars and $2,000 in scholastic books. Great. Um, Lauren Romag, our new librarian, really needs a shout out because she really organized and did a lot of this and a lot of, on her own time. Um, and it was, it was pretty amazing to see all the families in here. We even have family night, so it was pretty crowded, <laughs> which is good. a good thing. Yeah. Um, Jerry said our online lunch. We have um, our math night. So again, on March 14th, we're just getting in the works of um, organizing that. So we're going to be doing that night again for families. I think it was Great. a big success yeah, last yeah. year. Yeah. <clears throat> so we can look forward to that happening. And we have another all school meeting coming up. Where did I write that? That was on the 17th. So come join us to celebrate um, some, some winter. We have a strings concert coming up. We have over 100 students participating in strings. So that concert is on December 20th, and there's gonna be two events, so no parking lot issues. Um, uh, it'll be at 10 and two. We have a lot of uh, classroom events happening for families. We have a family night happening tonight in pre-K. We have publishing parties going on and a lot of winter celebrations, so just a lot of um, family connections happening. And then, um, what's going on in the classrooms in first grade they're studying geometry um, and they'll be using what they learned to build gingerbread houses cool. maybe they can help design our front courtyard there you go yes mm -hmm. yes all right um, we the fourth grade um, just did some the publishing party to share their personal narratives and fifth grade reading the teachers right in so it's funny what do fireworks with rubber and silly putty have in common <laughs> So grade five is studying chemistry, and they just came off of a unit where they were mixing, it's called the Great Goo Activity, and they actually made slime, so that was a big hit. And art and technology have teamed up to create a stop motion animation unit for fifth and sixth grade students. So, That's cool. Yeah, we're busy. Great. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Should have my report for you as well. Um, I know you've seen this the last couple of reports, but we are moving, finally moving out of Christian Lane, the files out, the movers will be out on the 19th. And mm -hmm. um, so basically by the end of the month, um, we'll be able to hand off the building. And I've reached out to um, the buyer, and he's working with Waitley to work on a closing date. <coughs> um, the negotiations is almost in the way for Union 38. We start tomorrow night. Um, and so we'll be meeting tomorrow night, and then from there we'll. Um, put together our schedule for moving forward. Frontier is also happening at the same time, and we've um, had our, already had our initial meeting there and in um, side meetings um, as well. Um, the IFB has been posted for the um, business management services for the second half of the school year, so we'll be getting bids on that and be opening those on the 21st. Um, as that goes back to when our, our last joint meeting, if you remember mm -hmm. that I had to get that done um, this month. Um, <coughs> just kind of an announcement, we, uh, last week I awarded uh, em Emily Wallace, who's a senior at Frontier, the Superintendent's Award. She's a fantastic senior who's just involved in just about everything um, and is um, just a wonderful representation of an all-around student athlete, student musician, student in drama, student with excellent GPA, just a, what you yeah. what you would coin um, 
what you want your students to be doing when they're at school. So, nice. um, and then the last thing, um, and she'll be receiving, I'll present her to the Frontier School Committee, which happens annually. Um, the last thing is I, I give you a handout with it is the select board um, of Conway sent a note to Commissioner Jeff Riley regarding the proposed expansion of the uh, Pioneer Valley Chinese Immersion School. I just wanted to share that with you because they did that without solicitation from me. Um, in the sense of uh, they kind of went off their own, they got that kind of out of the blue, um, which I thought was great. And I just kind of wanted to bring it to your attentions, especially Trevor's, mm -hmm. um, that it is. Um, and additionally, there was a, another handout with that. Thank you. From the collaborative, which is um, uh, uh, Bill Deals or Bill Deals um, yep. letter talking about the Chinese Immersion School. And I think it's really, it's a good read. It's really informative if you're not the par about um, what's going on with the, um, with the charter schools. And it's not, again, they're looking to expand and it's not their mission that we're opposing. It's the funding formula and what it does to the schools in Franklin and yep. in, in Hampshire County um, and even Hamden County where they're also pulling from. And so it kind of spells out what's going on there and, and what needs to be looked at by the state. So. Um, I just wanted to share those with you. Yep. And then also in front of you, what, what happened? Um, oh, I gave it away. Um, is the enrollment trends, I think it's just a, um, the big pack of the paper, and I apologize to that tree, but the, um, it does a very nice job of, going, of showing the trends of enrollment in Massachusetts and trends of school choice and, um, you know, as you dig through it, I mean, some of the graphs are awful. Down the one in front of you, there's that big blue one. I don't get that one, but um, but as you go through, it's just kind of an interesting way to pick up information and also get an idea of what's going on with enrollments in Franklin County um, as you go deeper in it and you can look at other um, other of our schools in our larger district of schools and how we compare to what's going on in Franklin in Hampshire County um, and so on and so forth. So I just thought it was a good information on I know it's a it it's a big print out but if you don't put it in front of you sometimes right. you email it you say you'll get around to it but you won't yeah, no, it's good to have, I'm glad you printed it I, I you know <laughs> and the, the enrollment is um you know we saw this kind of trend and everyone's uh, but it, it seems to be kind of like yeah creeping up a little bit or but, if you look through it shows you where the ages of the students um, I think it's like the second to last page, I'm going off of memory, yep. of in each county. And so, again, then we got to look at what's happening in our district as well. Yep. Um, it's just kind of, it's just an interesting kind of thing. Just data is always interesting to look at. What does that mean for us right now? Yep. I think I kind of already knew where we were, we were at in, that, in those things. Um, I was surprised that Mahar has these, is losing students, but is also increasing school choice at the, at the amount there. Just looking over at you. Talking about different schools, but, yeah. but I was surprised at that data there. Um, but anyways, it just, it's interesting. Um, I guess it's interesting stuff, so I just wanted you to have it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I think that's all I have. Well, thank you all. Yeah. That sounds like we're heading into the holiday season with. Good news all around. Yes. Did anyone else have any items they would like to bring up this evening? No, the public. <laughs> Hearing that there are none, I would entertain a motion. Motion to adjourn. Adjourn. And a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Thank you.